Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is Intel's Frost Canyon NUC, or Nook, which is basically the name of small form factor desktop computers that Intel's been offering for a number of years. And this is one of the most powerful to date to be quite this small. It's a little computer that measures just about 4.6 by 4.4 by 2 inches high. There's also a smaller version that's only 1.5 inches high, but it has less storage options. And it's got in some ways the heart of a laptop, but the expansion capabilities of a desktop computer, or at least some of them. So it's a small enough system that you can sort of put it anywhere. It hides pretty easily underneath or behind a display. You can put it in the living room, use it in the office or whatever. And it's a pretty powerful little machine as well as I've noticed from uh, benchmarks. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a moment. But first, let's just talk about what it is. Uh, this little computer has an Intel Core i7 six core Comet Lake processor. It's also available with Core i3 and Core i5 versions, but the version that Intel loaned me for this review is the Core i7 version. It's running at 25 watts, which is a little bit more power than that same chip usually uses in laptops, and the performance is pretty, pretty good, actually. Uh, again, we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, in terms of what you can do, it's basically a full-fledged Windows PC, also capable of running Linux or other operating systems, and in this case, what we've got is a Power HDMI 2.0 Ethernet, Gigabit Ethernet, uh, two full-size USB Type-A ports, Thunderbolt 3, full-size SDXC card, USB Type-C, not Thunderbolt, uh, USB Type-A, headset and power, and also four microphones here that you can use for voice controls. And there's also an infrared receiver on the front if you wanted to use it with remote control. You can connect up to three 4K displays using an adapter that'll let you plug two into the Thunderbolt port and one into HDMI. I've only tested it with two displays, but that does seem to work pretty well. And under the hood, uh, as I mentioned, this version has a Core i7 processor, but it's uh, it also has a 2.5 inch hard drive and a 256 gig PCIe NVMe SSD and 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, in order to get at the inside, all you really need to do is unscrew these feet, which normally takes a screwdriver, but I pre-loosened them for purposes of this video, just to show you what it looks like underneath. Probably should have pre-loosened them a little bit more than this. There we go. And once it's opened up, you can see that the hard drive is here. And we've also got an M2 slot for storage and two sodium slots for memory. So it's relatively upgradable. Uh, given its small size. One thing you can't upgrade is the processor, and that's sort of one thing that sets this apart from a more typical desktop-style computer, is that the uh, the CPU is uh, stuck to the motherboard, and what you get when you buy it is pretty much all that you're ever going to get. I just put this on sideways. There we go. Now, in terms of performance, I've been pretty impressed. It doesn't have discrete graphics, and it doesn't have Intel Iris Plus graphics, uh, so it's not exactly a gaming machine, but because it has that Thunderbolt port, you could theoretically attach an external graphics dock or graphics card if you wanted to. Um, those tend to be fairly large, expensive, and heavy, so I'm not sure that that's uh, necessarily what you're going to do if you're looking for a small computer, but it is an option that you have. But in terms of overall uh, CPU performance, even though this has a 25-watt processor, I find that in a lot of uh, situations it actually outperforms a computer with a 45-watt processor. So let's go ahead and plug it in, and I'll show you a little bit about what it can do. If you walk with me, um, first we're just going to take a power adapter and plug it in and plug in Thunderbolt adapter that has my uh, keyboard, monitor, speakers, and a couple of other things plugged in here. So let's try and position this so you can see. It has a uh, Wi-Fi 6 module on the inside, as well as uh, Bluetooth 5.0. So right now I've got it hooked up to this Bluetooth mouse, and I've got a wireless dongle for a keyboard. Now you might have heard when it turned on, a fan started to spin. 
It's small, but it's not silent, and you will hear that fan running from time to time. Uh, under normal use, as somebody who runs a website and spends a lot of time basically working at a web browser with maybe 15, 20 tabs running at a time, I find that it uses around 20 watts, and the fan sort of kicks in at this level and then gets quieter. And under very heavy load, it can go up a little bit higher. So uh, I'll actually show you. Here, let's pull up this tool so we can keep an eye on the power consumption. So right now, total system power is currently running at about 14 watts. The maximum listed is, well, it was 35, now it says 44.7. So you can see it sort of jumps around depending on what's happening. And if I really wanted to push things to the limit, I could do something like... That's not what I wanted. Fire Prime 95 which is sort of a CPU torture test tool. And with that running, I don't know how well you can see this, but now the CPU power is running at 46 watts. I've seen it go as high as 82 before sort of averaging down to around 60. So even though it's a 25 watt processor, it can actually hit higher levels. And it shows that the total system power here can go as high as uh, 80 in, under certain circumstances. So that's just sort of a quick uh, torture test, just to show you what it's capable of. In terms of real-world performance, what I found is um, that when I'm doing things like, say, I actually need to turn on my audio card for this to work properly, uh, when I'm using audio editing software, like uh, Reaper with isotopes, uh, rather resource-intensive tools for uh, noise reduction, When it's running, the computer runs reasonably well, and in fact, I can render this entire hour-long podcast episode that I've been working on in less time using this than it takes to do the same thing with a laptop with a 45-watt hexa-core Intel Core i7-750H processor. So to get a sense of sort of those benchmark results, uh, you can go to lilliputing.com where I've listed them, but uh, I just wanted to show you that Despite its very small size, it is something that can get re that you can use for real work. So in addition to just sort of doing web work, I've used it for audio editing projects. Uh, you could use it for video editing, but you're probably going to be able to do some things more capably if you have a system that has discrete graphics. Uh, speaking of graphics, though, it does actually perform a relatively decent job with some gaming tasks. I am not much of a gamer, so I'm probably not the best person to, uh, to show these things off. But I'm gonna go ahead and fire up World War Z, which is a game that I uh, downloaded recently and has been a little bit of time playing, just to sort of show you what it looks like uh, when playing here. So even with just Intel UHD graphics, as I mentioned, it supports up to three 4K displays. Um, it'll do some basic gaming as well. There are, you're not going to use this for virtual reality, it doesn't support ray tracing, it doesn't support some of those other features, but for basic gaming it's not too bad, and for more casual games than this it's probably going to be even better. So. So again, you can sort of hear the fan kick in. And it usually comes in short bursts and then sort of quiets down. It's not really any louder than the laptop fan, and it's just kind of white noise.
So if you're watching videos or listening to music or playing games, you're probably not going to notice the fan too much. Anyways, so that's just a little bit of gaming. Stress test. I guess uh, one thing I haven't shown you is just open an incognito window so you don't see all of my stuff. monitor but let's play a 4k 60 fps video on youtube So that seems pretty good. Just skip ahead a little bit here. So overall, uh, smooth graphics, everything seems to work pretty much the way that it should. And uh, overall, I'm pretty impressed with this little computer. Uh, as I mentioned, I was able to plug it into two displays. It's a little bit sort of hard to fit them both on, uh, on this video, but I'm just gonna go ahead and plug in a second monitor, give you a quick glimpse that looks like. And show you that now we've got it spanning two displays. So we've got this tiny little computer that fits underneath the, the riser for my, for my desktop uh, display and powers both a 2560 by 1080 and a 1080 uh, P display while taking up a very small amount of space. So it's a, uh, it's a, pretty versatile machine. Uh, one thing I guess I haven't mentioned is that this particular configuration, which has 16 gigs of RAM, uh, 256 gigabytes of solid state storage, and a terabyte of hard drive storage, and Windows 10 Home, this version sells for around $1,000. A bare bones model, if you wanted to supply your own memory storage and operating system, is maybe in around $600, $620. And there are versions as well that are as low as 450, maybe for a Core i5 bare bones version, or in the 350 range for a Core i3 bare bones version. Now those have don't have six core processors, but they do have 25 watt processors. So that's sort of the the overview of the uh, Intel Frost Canyon Nook 10 series. You can find more details at lilliputing.com. I just wanted to sort of shoot this companion video for a written review. But if you want to have sort of solid benchmark numbers. Uh, talk about real-world performance, talk about sort of how it compares to a bunch of other systems, and just have a better look overall at uh, 
at the system from all sides, you can go to lilliputing.com for more details and also find more links to uh, Intel's website for specifications, places where you can buy it and so forth. Uh, it's not necessarily the best choice for everybody. If you really want a discrete graphics, if you really wanted, I don't know, a 64 core processor or something, there are other options out there. But given the compact size, I'm really impressed with the performance. And I think that the price is reasonable if you value sort of that compact size over all else. So this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing and a look at the Intel Nook 10 Frost Canyon series. Uh, and you can find more details at lilliputing.com.